Hey everyone! So I am back. I posted about an hour ago asking if you had any questions that I could answer for you. So here I am, pick my brain. If you have a question relating to essential oils and aromatherapy, I'm your gal. I can help answer your questions. So type them in the comments below so that I can answer your question. Um, we did have Kelly who replied to my post about an hour ago letting you know I was going to be live and her question is any recommendations on oils that will help calm down an adrenal gland rush diffusible or topical so yes there are certain essential oils that are calming um, just to be clear essential oils do not contain hormones nor are they used to replace hormones nor can they heal the thyroid heal the adrenal gland or anything like that. But when we feel an adrenaline rush, when we are feeling stressed, when we are feeling anxious, there are some essential oils that can help um, address that and calm our nervous system and make us feel more relaxed. So let me find, let me just grab the link for you because in our essential oil recipes club, I actually do have a diffuser blend for anxiety. So let me give you that link right now. Um, there we go. There is a lot of free information that you can find on my website, leahjacobson.com. You can click library, you can scroll down, you can access the yellow box that talks about our learning center and you'll have access to a lot of topics over there. Um, and as well as our essential oil recipes club. We do have a free level available so that you can access some free recipes. We have recipes um, for hand sanitizer and gel. We have a cleaning spray that's antiviral. We have a recipe for anxiety, um, for allergies. We have recipes, uh, I think about a dozen recipes over there that are available at the free level. Do not underestimate the information in the intro topics. I do have um, all of the introductions to all of the different topics in the EO Recipes Club available for free as well. Um, some things like I believe is upset stomach. I do recommend herbal teas. So there are some non-essential oil things that I do have available at the free level for you over there in the EO Recipes Club. Our learning center is 100% free. Everything you see there is free. There's only one access level. It's free. Um, and I'm working to move everything from our Using Essential Oil Safely website over into that free membership center since Facebook likes to tell me what I can and cannot post even on my own website. So that stinks. Oh, cool. So we have a couple of questions. Um, let me see. When diffusing, how long is the oil left in the air? If it's no longer on, is it safe for the kids to enter the room? That is a great question and I wish there was an easy answer, um, but you have to take a few things into consideration. So to your point of when can kids enter the room, I'm going to make an assumption that you are asking about, you are diffusing something not safe for them, such as peppermint. If you have under age six kids, peppermint essential oil is not recommended. If you have under age 10 kids, eucalyptus, rosemary, anything that has um, a high amount of 1,8 cineol is not going to be recommended. And there are other essential oils as well. Um, so if you are diffusing it and you want your kids to let, be let back in the room, there's a couple of things you can do. So you can open your window, create some airflow that will accelerate the fresh air in and um, disturb the air enough that it should be clear for your kids to enter, should only be a few minutes. If that is not an option, you can blow a fan, open the door. It, it really depends on what your room is set up like. Um, you, yeah, so fans on, windows open. Otherwise, it may be, you know, it really depends on the airflow. If it's an open concept room, the air is more disturbed. The air, you know, there's a lot of places the air can go rather than a small enclosed bedroom or office. So it's, it's really going to depend. But you can clear the air in a few short minutes if you are able to use a window or a fan. Otherwise, it may be about 15 minutes or so. It really depends on the situation, but that should give you some sort of guideline. The key is if you can smell it, they can smell it. And if you are inhaling it, then they are going to be able to inhale it and that can cause adverse reactions. The trick to that though is if you've been inhaling it for a while and your olfactory fatigue kicks in and you really can't smell it, but they might be able to smell it, then you could be presented with an adverse reaction. They could have an adverse reaction. So 
kind of depends um, how long the oil is left in the air. Kind of depends on several different things. Um, but hopefully that helps answer your question and give you a little bit of guidance. And yes, of course, it's okay to ask. Yeah, you guys can ask whatever you want to on here. Um, Lisa's question is, what is a good oil for pneumonia not related to COVID and the best way to use it? So there are several different essential oils that are great for respiratory issues. And I do have um, a steam inhalation congestion blend available at the free level of our EO Recipes Club. So let me give you the link to that if you are not yet a member. Um, you can go ahead and sign up here under congestion, look for steam inhalation, and you can get um, a description on the different essential oils to use, everything to do with that. But basically, fur needle is my number one go-to when it comes to congestion. Um, I don't know what specific symptom you are talking about related to pneumonia. If you are talking about trying to kill the infection, then tea tree essential oil is absolutely amazing. But a steam inhalation is going to give you the best result. That is going to get deep into the lungs. That is going to loosen that stuff up. That is going to allow that tea tree essential oil to do its job on killing the bacteria in there, the virus, whatever that's in there. Um, tea tree is antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, so it does everything. It's absolutely amazing. So that would be my recommendation for pneumonia if you are talking about trying to be able to breathe better and clear the lungs. If there's something I'm missing there, if there are other symptoms or anything else that's more specific, please go ahead and drop me more information in the comments below. But that is available at the free level of the EO Recipes Club, that recipe there. Um, Kelly's asking, does rosemary and eucalyptus help to break up mucus in the lungs? It can. Um, I personally have found, and due to the therapeutic properties um, and the constituents of those essential oils, I do find that fur needle is actually a lot more effective at doing that. I know rosemary and eucalyptus, especially eucalyptus, you know, gets that um, reputation of being like the number one go-to for congestion when it really isn't as effective as fur needle. Just like lavender is kind of like, oh, you want to calm down? Use lavender. Well, that doesn't actually work for some people. In fact, for some people, it actually is stimulating, especially if too much is used or the wrong kind is used. And there are actually other essential oils that do a better job of calming you down and helping you to relax than lavender. So yes, you can use rosemary and eucalyptus um, as long as it's being used with children over the age of 10. Um, some people that are prone to convulsions who are epileptic do find that rosemary and eucalyptus can actually be triggers for that. So you want to be super careful of that. Um, but otherwise you can use those, yes. Um, especially if you are doing a steam inhalation. That is going to be the most effective way to break up the mucus in the lungs. Um, Crystal has a follow-up. Is it possible to use oils to make general linen sprays or safe air freshening without chemicals? Absolutely! Absolutely. Mostly because I have under two in the home. It is too cold to open the window still for us. Absolutely. So for linen sprays, I actually do have a linen spray for sleep. So if you enroll in the um, EO Recipes Club, again, grab the free level. You don't have to purchase an enrollment. Um, but even at the free level, I do have a sleep recipe that is a linen spray. So you can use that basic recipe and you can put other essential oils in it for other purposes and not just sleep. But that has um, sedative essential oils in there that are going to be helpful for relaxing to the point of, yes, you want to sleep. So it's not like you want a relaxing environment for working or a relaxing environment for school or anything like that. These actually have sedative essential oils in it. So it will help to encourage that sleep. Um, as for air fresheners, yes, absolutely. You can diffuse my dynamic duo. Um, tea tree and lemon essential oils are amazing antiviral, antibacterial, anti-germ essential oils that you can diffuse that are safe for all ages, that are even safe if you have a dog in the room. I do not recommend using essential oils with cats and you can find more information in the learning center under pets as to why but you can diffuse those essential oils to cleanse the air. You can also use them as air fresheners too. And of course there are lots of other essential oils that are safe for kids and dogs that you can also use. Um, if you are not yet a member of our learning center, it's absolutely free to enroll. Go to leahjacobson.com, click on the yellow box and enroll in there. I'm actually gonna leave you a link here. 
And then you can click the tab children and you can find more information on what is safe and not for children. If you need a more thorough, extensive list, I have two options for you. And there is an online version, there is an ebook version and a print version. Um, Essential Oil Profiles contains the safety as well as the therapeutic properties and benefits for the top 60 essential oils. And it includes safety information with children, including safe to inhale or use topically, for example, this one is clove essential oil. It is safe for all ages to inhale, but topically it's not for under age two. And the top 60 essential oils are in this one, as well as um, charts for diffusing and information on a few other topics as well back here. I was trying to grab a diffusing chart, so I mean diluting chart so that you can see that as well. So there's these charts here so you can understand about diluting. And the second option is that's in our library is the essential oil safety files. That is the safety for over 240 different essential oils. And it tells you exactly who can use the essential oils, who should avoid the essential oils, drug interactions, all of that stuff. You can find both of those in our library. Um, and let me give you the link for that as well. It's leahjacobson.com slash library if you'd like any of those resources. Um, Crystal said totally grabbing that book. Very, very useful. Um, Crystal's also saying, just keep baby out of the room when actually diffusing. Yes, so if it is a, an essential oil that is safe for children, you can diffuse over the age of six months. Under the age of six months, we generally recommend avoiding diffusing simply because they are so young, you know, their lungs are small. We, we generally want to avoid any harsh aromas or anything like that. So generally speaking, you want to avoid diffusing under age six months and generally, you want to avoid topical use under the age of two, but there are some exceptions. Bee sting, put on lavender, put on helichrysum, absolutely fine. Just dilute it first. Um, but you can diffuse with baby in the room. The other key is click on the inhalation tab in the learning center as well, because you will learn um, the times of diffusing, the different ways you can diffuse, you know, how to properly use an inhaler and how many drops to add and all of that stuff. So lots of information over there under the inhaling tab too. Um, hey Pam. Okay. So let me click see more on, oops, wait. Okay. I'm actually seeing different things here than I am there. So let me just make sure I almost missed Cynthia's question. Is fennel good or bad? I found a recipe that included it, then found a book that says to stay away from it. Stay away from it. So let me look up fennel for you in here so that you can see. So we have bitter fennel and we have sweet fennel and they both happen to have the same safety. Um, they have a little bit different on the topical max, but basically I'm telling you to stay away from it. It's just too risky. And there are other essential oils that are going to be more effective for whatever you want to use fennel for without the potential adverse reactions such as Number one, it's anticoagulant. So if you are using aspirin or other blood thinners, if you are about to have surgery, just had surgery, if you are prone to nosebleeds, um, then you want to stay away because again, it's anticoagulant. And some people who didn't even think they were prone to nosebleeds may diffuse fennel or clove or cinnamon bark and might find themselves with a nosebleed because it's anticoagulant and they're just that sensitive to it. It's also most importantly, potentially carcinogenic. It's also a reproductive hormone modulator. So if you have endometriosis or estrogen dependent cancers, then you want to be even more careful using this essential oil. And then of course it's not safe for pregnancy or breastfeeding or to use with your pets. If you choose to use it, you still have to use it topically at an extremely low dilution of either 1.8%. Well, I guess that's not extremely low, but it's pretty low 1.8% or 2.5% for sweet. It's seriously best avoided. I highly recommend avoiding it. There's no reason to use that essential oil. Um, let's see, do I still have the bundles? I do still have some bundles, Pam, yes. Now we are totally out of the aromatherapy daily tips. So I literally have no more left of these, no more left of these. So the print bundles that are available, and I'll give you the link to that because actually that link is not in our library. Um, would be these two, ah, would be these two. So I do have, I do have a few left of these. I have probably about 10 of these left. And that includes if it's bought in a bundle, I have literally about 10 left. 
and I have about 20 of these. So I have a little bit more of these. So yeah, if you want a bundle, you can um, grab one. Let me actually give you the link to that because like I said, it's actually not available in the library. The bundle page is a completely different link. So it's leahjacobson.com slash bundle. I just added it as a reply to Pam. Okay. Okay. There it is, Pam. I was going to say, I know you had another question. Okay. Kind of long, but anything for muscle spasms, muscle relaxer? Yes. I've been seen by doctors and have a lot of testing on hold until the COVID closures pass on muscle relaxer and physical therapy for now. Need something for spasms and muscle nerve pain. Okay. So there are essential oils that can be useful. However, um, Calm Mag is a magnesium supplement. Okay. I'm going to reply to your other question here because I'm not seeing it on my, on my screen. Um, it is a magnesium powder supplement that you can add to water and it's amazing for leg cramps. It also can help encourage you to sleep. So if you take it at night, it's not going to knock you out. It's not a sedative in that sense, but it can help relax you that way too. Um, and it won't cause diarrhea like some other magnesium supplement. So I would highly recommend that because for most things, what you can take in internally is going to actually help you a lot better than something you apply topically. In this situation, you can go either way and you can absolutely use both. So for antispasmodic essential oils, um, you could use, you can actually use peppermint essential oil. You can use something like copaiba, which also helps with pain. Um, you know what, let me just, cause you're not asking for pain specifically. So in our library, we have this handy tool that sometimes I find myself needing to use like right now called therapeutic properties profiles. And on the top, you can search for different, um, therapeutic properties, um, such as right now, I'm going to look for antispasmodic click there. Cause I don't have a running list of all of these different essential oils in my head all the time. So for antispasmodic, there are, um, so this is specifically for muscular spasm or cramp. And I have a list of gosh, probably three dozen different essential oils that will be effective. But what I also do is I not only give you the list, but I actually pull, like in this case, I have eight of those essential oils from the list that I'm grabbing to say, these are going to be the best antispasmodic essential oils out of the bunch. So in this case, we have cedarwood atlas, German chamomile, frankincense, mandarin, sweet marjoram, sweet orange, Australian sandalwood, and tangerine. So those would be specifically antispasmodic. But again, there are other essential oils as well that have antispasmodic properties, although maybe not in as high as, dilute, as high a dilution as the ones that I just listed for you. Um, so that is something that you can access again from our library, leahjacobson.com slash library, and you can access, um, the therapeutic properties profiles in there. Um, let's see what else was I going to mention with that? So you can do a top, you can do a topical application of that. I would probably recommend about, I would probably suggest trying it around a two or 3% dilution, possibly going up to five for that. It depends. Um, but if you are a member of our recipes club, then I can absolutely, um, create a custom recipe for you that actually assesses the essential oils that you have and work with you to find the right dilution and all of that other stuff. Um, okay. Kelly is saying my husband has been using your sandalwood recommendation for cold sores when I asked you the other day, and I think he is now a firm believer in essential oils. Yay. Yay. You did it, Kelly. You won him over. That is amazing. That is great. Yes. I'm telling you, I know the power of essential oils. I used to get cold sores probably once a year or so, and I really don't get them anymore. But after I got into essential oils and I learned how sandalwood is antiviral and knowing that cold sores are also antiviral, I'm like, hmm. So if you can catch it just as it's starting to pop out, and those of you who have had them know that sometimes it feels like you have something on your lip, but you don't. And for me, I'm like, Ooh, gotta grab the sandalwood. So you grab the sandalwood and you can actually put a drop of sandalwood on a cotton swab and dab it directly on what will be the cold sore. And then you can, it will fade right away. If it's already started to bud, it, it will scab, you'll kill it. It'll stop it right in its tracks and it will go away. It does not have to blister and blossom into something hor horrible and ugly. So yes, if you can catch it, the sooner, the better. 
add that sandalwood essential oil, which is absolutely amazing. It is fabulous. I am so glad you got to experience that. I am so glad. And thank you so much for Kelly for actually sharing that with me. I really, really appreciate that. Yay. I'm actually going to screen cap your comment because I want to add that to, I don't have to use your name, but I want to add that to um, our essential oil recipes club in our success stories. I'm way behind in adding success stories in there. You are welcome, Pam. I made him a bunch of lip balm with it. You're the best. That's a great idea. Awesome. Love it. Great idea. Yes. Yay. I love hearing success stories like that. That is amazing. Um, you're the best. Thank you, Kelly. I'm so glad you were able to do that. That's exciting. Awesome. Hey, Kaylee. Hey, Jody. Thank you so much for watching. And Marsha and everybody else on here, if you have a question about essential oils for me, now is a great time to ask me because um, I am here live ready to answer your questions about essential oils. Facebook is very trigger happy on the delete posts or flag posts of spam, but I must say that I've been doing a lot better the last few weeks. I have not had anything flagged as spam or any problems with anything since I've been pointing you guys over to the learning center and saying all of those triggering keywords over there instead of here. But that being said too, um, live video, they're a lot more forgiving. I think there are a lot less people um, watching videos so I can actually talk about antiviral essential oils and stuff without getting flagged at least so far. Um, so if you have any questions, um, this is really the best way for me to answer you more plainly. Um, do you think essential oils affect people with different blood types? Um, I don't believe so. I've not heard anything. I've not found any research um, talking about the efficacy of essential oils depending on which blood type you have. Um, if it's a thing, Maybe it's a thing, don't know, but there is no um, evidence pointing to that at all. Um, any oils for dry cracked heels? The key for the dry cracked heels is going to be a moisturizer. So I would suggest a heavy butter, um, shea butter, mango butter, um, mixed with an oil like jojoba oil. Um, actually have an EO Recipes Club. I think Ashley, you are a member, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you are a member of the EO Recipes Club, but you can check out either the psoriasis or the eczema um, recipes. I actually have recipes for um, for a body butter as well as a body balm in there. And then you can add, you know, skin nourishing essential oils on top of that, which is probably, you know, really included in the psoriasis and eczema recipes too. But the key is not so much the essential oils, it's the moisturization. So that would be the key. Um, is hyssop a good decongestant? Which kind of hyssop? Because hyssop is generally not an essential oil that I would recommend using, um, depending on the kind of hyssop. So there are two, and here, here I am, I'm already here. Um, actually there's, no, there is two. Maybe there's two. So there are two that I have in here. There's a linalol one that is safe, and then there's the pinot camphene that is not safe, and the one that I do not recommend. And unfortunately, it's usually the most common one as well, unfortunately. So I do not recommend using that um, at all, regardless if it's effective or not <laughs> um, for as a decongestion. If you, Kelly, if you are looking for a great recipe for congestion, I do have one in the EO Recipes Club at the free level. Um, and you can find it in there. Let me actually reply to you so that you can actually find that. So check out congestion and you will find a steam inhalation recipe over there with the essential oils that are, are actually going to be more effective. Um, Hamey, with everything, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. With everything going on right now, which essential oils blends are the must haves and what's the best way to diffuse um, or topical to use them? Yes. So tea tree and lemon essential oils. There is, okay, regardless of what anyone else says, there is evidence that tea tree essential oil is effective for influenza, okay? I know the things and everything going on right now um, is a little bit different. It is a different family altogether. It's a specific virus. It's a little bit different. But with the knowledge that we have, we can at least use the essential oils that we know do work on things that are close to the thing that's going around right now. So I highly recommend, I was on PubMed earlier because somebody else showed me a video of somebody else who is a professional aromatherapist that has said that there's no evidence that essential oils work for influenza even. And I'm like, yes, 
There are. I went right over to PubMed just like that, found two instances. In fact, I believe I still have one open. Yes. Um, thus, we proved that Melaleuca alternifolia concentrate could prevent influenza virus from entering the host cell by disturbing the normal viral membrane, membrane fusion procedure. That took me 0.2 seconds. There is evidence. So yes, I would highly recommend using tea tree essential oil and lemon essential oil, either diffused, um, used in a personal inhaler, added to your aromatherapy pendant, however that you can inhale it. Because inhaling those essential oils will bring those antiviral essential oils into your lungs. And then if you are also breathing germs, viruses, bacteria, whatever into your lungs, it will fight it off and kill it on contact. So yes, those would be the must haves. Um, tea tree essential oil, lemon essential oil. Now I do have recipes in the EO recipes club under virus for hand sanitizers as well. And if you click on cleaning, you can find um, the cleaning spray and both of those contain tea tree essential oil and lemon essential oil. So if you need, um, topically the only reason to use it is as a hand sanitizer, um, which don't be confused if you are stuck at home, if you are staying home by choice or because you can or whatever, I highly recommend it, stay home. Um, just use soap and water. You can absolutely use soap and water. But if you have to leave, like I had to leave a couple times, leave a couple times because I've had to um, send packages that were too big to put in my mailbox like a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was last week, whenever, whatever it was that I had all of those basic core student workbooks to ship and they're big books and, you know, had to do what I had to do. So um, in that case, I do recommend a hand sanitizer. Otherwise, if you're at home, you don't need one. But if you are away from home, you don't have a sink, you don't have soap, use a hand sanitizer. Um, Ashley, at the free level. No, the psoriasis and eczema recipes are not available at the free level. Um, they are available at the paid level. And there are two paid levels, by the way, guys. There's a member level, which is the recipes. And then there is the VIP, which is recipes, plus access to our student Facebook group where I go live every single week and do a Q&A, but I also focus on one recipe that you guys voted on. So the VIPs vote on a single recipe that I'm going to focus on from all the recipes published and we go over that and I answer questions um, and all of that, as well as you guys get to vote on the next recipe that I add. And last week it was liquid foundation. This week it's actually sugar scrub. So I'm super, super excited for that as well. Um, Pam, are your live videos going to be available after for rewatching? Yes, they are. And I've been trying to remember also to upload them to YouTube. Um, what lemon and tea tree do you like best brand wise? Um, for lemon and tea tree, I am, I do not have to get like the most expensive ones. In fact, I purchased, let me actually grab for you what I have. So I grabbed these from Amazon because I like to use these in cleaning. So I have happened to have these brands here. Now, this is a brand that was completely new to me and I had never purchased it before, but as you know, the whole C thing was going on, I found the normal brand that I purchased, they were out. Um, you do not have to spend a lot. I think I spent $12 maybe for four ounce bottle, but you use them in cleaning. Like it's not as important to have, you know, organic, you know, blah, 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 blah. You don't have, I'm not touching my skin with it. I don't have to worry about that. So just get whatever you need to get. You can get an inexpensive brand. It will work just fine. Now in a hand sanitizer, um, I actually, I think the brand that I have is probably Florihana, um, for the lemon essential oil and the tea tree essential oils that I use in my hand sanitizer, just because I'm a little bit more picky. Um, but there are lots of different brands that I use. There are some brands that I don't use and you can find all of that over in our learning center. Um, and then if you click brands, you can find all of that information over there. But yeah, when it comes to cleaning, um, I want more bang for my buck because I'm actually going through them a lot more quickly um, in my sprays and all of that and diffusing or whatnot. Um, so I'm not as picky. And in fact, this Body Wonders one, I was super, super surprised. I think it was this one. They actually... Um, let's see. Yeah. So it says for aromatherapy use for all other purposes, carefully dilute with a carrier oil prior to use. Um, please consult an essential oil book or other professional reference sources for suggested dilution ratios. So I do appreciate, I mean, of course they have the typical avoid contact with eyes, keep away from children stuff, but I do appreciate that they are 
letting you know that you should dilute it first if you are using on your skin. So look for that. I highly recommend trying to find brands like that. Um, I'm not sure if this one has it too. Um, yeah, for topical application, carefully dilute with a carrier oil. Recommended for external use only. And again, this is probably, you know, pretty typical for essential oils in general. Um, yeah, I, this is literally all I've bought from those two brands. So, you know, take it or leave it. Um, let's see if there's any other questions here. Do you guys have any more questions for me when it comes to using essential oils? Um, please feel free to leave a comment below so I can answer your question. Um, let's see if there's, there, is there anything else? Let me check that other post because I don't know if anybody else has asked a question on that. Otherwise, if you are typing, go for it. Nope. So there's nothing over there. Okay. If I'm not seeing any more questions, then I will let you guys go and I will, um, finish adding blends. So yes, here's the thing. If there are any blends that you want for me to assess for you, um, go ahead and leave those in the comments too, because I've just added, I just added five new blends from Eden's Garden per your request. And I will be adding at least five more when I'm done here. Mondays, if you guys don't already know, are my days to add more blends to the essential oil blends safety files. So at about 10 a week, I add more blend um, assessments where I go over and I look at the different single essential oils that are used in the blends. And I come up with my safety assessment on the blend as a whole based on the different essential oils that are in it. So I've just added, in fact, I don't know that anybody can actually see it yet because I'm still in kind of my test section. Um, I just added Eden's Garden Love, Good Morning, Sunshine, Spice, Align, and Be Still. And I will be adding five more, probably from a different company. But if you have any specific um, blends or brands that you want me to include today, I've got five more spots open, let me know. Um, otherwise, I can add them to a list for next week. Um, great question, Hamie. How do you know if a person has become sensitized to an oil? So I actually do go over this. Let me just pop this open in our learning center. And this would be under diluting, I believe is where I threw that. Um, let me just make sure that's over there before I go ahead and tell you. So yes, diluting sensitization. So basically sensitization is a topical use reaction that can happen, um, over time when you have ignored your body's signals and signs that what you are doing is not, not safe for your skin. So sensitization is basically an immune system response. It's an inflammatory response to repeatedly adding either oxidized essential oils on your skin, undiluted essential oils on your skin, something you're allergic to. Um, there's a number of different reasons why your skin can become red itchy, blistered, um, there's a whole bunch of different topical skin reactions. And no, it is not detox. It is your skin having a topical adverse reaction to the essential oil. And there's, again, a number of reasons why that can happen. But if you notice that it's red, you keep using the essential oil or maybe a different essential oil, um, and it's getting worse, it's getting irritated, there's going to become a point where your body will actually not react well to even the inhalation of that essential oil. Um, so that can also happen if you are sensitized topically, you can become sensitized even if you inhale it. So you can know that by just your skin reactions that you are having. Um, if you over diffuse for a long period of time, um, it can also happen, but it's most always a topical skin reaction. I actually had a friend who broke a bottle of lemongrass essential oil on her kitchen floor, a tile floor and it broke open everywhere. So she's trying to pick it up and clean it because she has a dog in the house and everything. And she got sensitized to that. It got to the point where if, even if lemongrass was in a blend, she could not inhale it, she started reacting. Like, and the reactions for inhalation can be like allergy type reactions, like sneezing, watery eyes, um, coughing, struggling to breathe, headaches, feeling nauseated, all of that type of stuff. Typically, um, Overdoing inhalation can be cleared up by getting fresh air. Typically, you are not going to have a long-term reaction to inhalation. Technically, sensitization is a topical skin reaction. And yes, there is more information in our learning center under diluting and then click sensitization um, for more information. So let me see what other questions there are. 
Um, arthritis options for someone that does have anticoagulants. Yes. So for someone that has pain, you can use something like Helichrysum and Copaiba, and those don't have the drug interactions. Um, and I do have um, several recipes over in our EO Recipes Club 2 um, if you are in there. Kelly, blends as in including our own dilution ratios for certain ailments. Um, no. So the blend assessments that I do are from companies out there that are selling their own blends. And a lot of you are like, is Thieves safe? Is On Guard safe? Is, you know, all of these different blends and you want to know the safety. And those actually blends that I just mentioned are part of the free level. So I do have a free level of the EO blend safety as well. Um, let me go ahead and add that link in here so that you guys can get in at least on the free level. Um, but I do assessments for companies that are already selling their essential oil so that you can know, is it safe for your kids? Is it safe for you? Is it safe for your dog? Um, if you don't know what to look for. So you can absolutely just use this book. Um, this is actually the main reference that I use. There, there's a couple of essential oils that I found after I published this just a few months ago. Um, that are not included. They're very rare essential oils and that have unknown safety, but pretty much any essential oil blend that you come across, you are going to find the single essential oils included in here in the um, essential oil safety files. So if you want to take the work to look up each individual essential oil in a blend, and I know some companies have like 20, 30, 40 different single essential oils, those actually take me a lot of work to go through. Um, but what I do is I look up the safety for those specific essential oils and I have an entire spreadsheet and I list all the safety out and then I combine all of that information into one assessment. And that is what you will see um, for Thieves, On Guard, Breathe. Um, there's several other companies and their blends. Um, I think I have like um, Germ Fighter or something I think over there as well or Guardian or something, I don't know. Um, but you can find I have several blend assessments over there. I do not have a print book for that because I'm still adding to it. There are, let me see actually how many, I have so many essential oils over there, but let me give you the running total, which will change tonight. As I mentioned, I'm in the middle of adding another 10. So yes, 25 different brands and 360 different blends that I have assessed. So you can go to that link that I just added and you can scroll down and you can see and search for and look um, at all of the different blends that I've gone through. And then if you keep scrolling to the bottom, you can access the free level where there are 42 blends included at the free level that you can access right now. Um, so what else was I going to mention about that? Yeah, so I mean, you can either go through them yourself or you can um, get access to this where I go through them for you. Either or, it's totally up to you. Um, let's see, um, Donna Marie, the pictures of the bottom of the feet with the different body organs, does it really help that particular body part by applying oils there? No, it does not. What you're talking about is reflexology, um, which is a whole separate thing from essential oils and essential oils do not, no, that, that is just not going to happen. If you have an issue with your knee, don't look for the part on your foot that's supposed to be connected to your knee. Put it on your knee, okay? It's pretty simple. So no, no, I do not recommend going by that. You will not have very effective results. Um, Dorada, hi Leo, what do you think about the Center of Excellence Aromatherapy courses, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know, I've not heard of those. There are courses that come up and crop up here, there and everywhere all the time, but let me go ahead and take a peek and see if I can find anything. Um, aromatherapy diploma course. Um, the quickest way to find out is if you go to um, alliance-international.org, I think is the one, but anyways, it's the Alliance of International Aromatherapists. They have a list of recognized schools um, as well as NAHA, National Association of Holistic Aromatherapists, um, or Aromatherapy. They both have a list of approved schools that actually pay money to be included um, it's not just pay money to be included, but they do have to actually pay money to be included on the list, but they also have hoops to jump through to make sure that their curriculum has a certain amount of things in it. Um, so I am not sure if this particular, I'm seeing the aromatherapy diploma course says it's certified or accredited, you know, by who don't know what that means. Um, you'd have to do a little bit of research. So it looks like they talk about the history of aromatherapy, which is, you know, you have, there are certain things that have to be in the curriculum. Um, what is the limbic system, olfactory pathways, 
Um, it doesn't actually look like there's a whole lot here. So it's talking about the limbic system, olfactory pathway, so like inhalation, and then the subtle body, massage in the electromagnetic field, meditation, protect. Mm, doesn't seem to be a whole lot there. Um, just looking at what they're saying is in here, I don't know that it would actually give you a whole lot of stuff. Um, not saying you're not going to learn anything. I'm sure there's plenty to learn, but, um, don't know. It's hard just, just, you know, checking it out that quickly, but see if it's on the AIA or NAHA, um, list of approved schools or not. And then you can, um, learn more information that way too. I need those books. Your older dilution charts are my mini Bible. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. So the older dilution charts, they are included in here. There is a lot of, um, information and charts included here in the bonus section. So you have charts like this so that you know how much to dilute based on um, the percentage. So this is diluting at a, at a 0.25 dilution. So like for real little ones, 0.5 dilution. Um, roller bottles, you have all of that information here as well as the master chart too. So yes, all of that is included in essential oil profiles. Um, Rebecca, my daughter has dermatitis and we were only using essential oils in a diffuser. The doctor told me not to use any oils at all because she thought it might trigger for her skin issues. After two weeks without the diffuser, we haven't seen a change. Could diffusing possibly trigger dermatitis? I've never heard of this before. Um, I personally don't believe that it does. It is possible that if you were sensitized topically, like I was talking about a few minutes ago, you can be sensitized topically. And then at that point, inhaling certain essential oils that you are sensitized to topically can actually affect you when you inhale them. Um, but I have never heard of, and I've never seen any research showing that simple inhalation can cause dermatitis. So I would look to, um, fabric softeners or laundry soap, things like that. Um, uh, you know, maybe whatever you're using in the bath, I would look to like what's actually being applied to the skin. Um, but out of curiosity, Rebecca, if you could let me know the types of, um, essential oils that you were diffusing, um, I would be curious to know that, but it, it really shouldn't honestly. And if you've been stopping for two weeks and haven't seen a change, that kind of backs up the theory that that is probably not the case. Um, it's, it's great that you tried it. I think it's definitely something that it was worth a try, but I, I would be surprised if that, if that was the case. Um, Pam is saying, thank you. Hope you don't mind me calling you Pam. Um, I have both of those and we'll be making something for my dad tonight. Awesome. Sounds good. Melinda, are there any essential oils that can help with chicken skin? My two-year-old has it horrible. Um, sometimes exfoliating can help, um, like a sugar scrub can help. Um, I would be curious to know why, why the chicken skin. Um, that's what I always think first is, okay, why is there dermatitis? Why is there chicken skin? Why is there inflammation? Why is there muscle pain? Why is there, you want to try to fix why that's happening so that you can prevent it, um, from happening continually in the future. But yes, essential oils can help. Um, I would say exfoliating would be my number one recommendation. So adding essential oils to a sugar scrub. And honestly, you don't even need the essential oils, to be honest. You can just use a plain sugar scrub. So mix um, sugar and an oil, mix it up, scrub it on the skin, and that can help with exfoliating part of that. Um, Rebecca, we were mainly using citrus singles and some spearmint for my occasional headaches. Yeah, that is, hmm. I mean, if you said something like cinnamon bark, or like oregano or something like that, then maybe, but yeah. By the way, Rebecca, if you don't already have a personal inhaler, use a personal inhaler instead. That will help your headache. That will help you with whatever you need help with without, without exposing your child, your pets, whoever else to those essential oils too. So that's what I highly recommend, personal inhalers. You just add your essential oils to the wick. That's in this glass piece here. Then you screw the top on and there are holes in the top that you breathe through. And then you simply, so that'd be one inhalation. You can take one to three inhalations per session and use it as often as needed. Hopefully you won't need to use it more than every couple hours depending on what the situation is, but that exposes you to the essential oils because it's in your little personal space instead of everyone in your house. 
and it's actually going to be more effective too because you have those essential oils right next to your face and you're inhaling those whereas a diffuser is much more ambient it's more subtle and so you probably were not receiving the full benefit from that anyways um, because you're diffusing several drops over a bunch of time and so a personal inhaler is going to be a lot more effective for you um pam works good i hope so um Haney, any good blends for hot flashes yes so i do have an amazing hot flash blend in the essential oil recipes club it is not available at the free level um and let me give you the link to the eo recipes club so that you can access that if you desire um yes so and then click hot flashes I just want to read to you um, one of the success stories from Sharon over um, in the hot flashes section. I just wanted to read that to you because it's super amazing. Um, okay, so Sharon says, I made this the other day and it works amazingly. I had another blend that worked so-so, but this works almost instantly. I can't say enough as I've been battling with hot flashes for nearly 17 years now. Not to be a sweaty mess is a blessing. Thanks, Leah. So that is from Sharon. I have had other people as well have success with that recipe. So I highly recommend trying it if you are able. You are welcome, Rebecca. Lori is watching. Hey, Lori. Hi, Leah. I lack the enzyme to taste cilantro properly. Tastes like soap. Yuck. Should I avoid coriander essential oil? No. No, you should not avoid coriander. Oh my gosh. I literally actually pulled this blend out earlier. Um, blend. It's a single essential. Where is it? Okay, I can't find it now. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Ah, oh, coriander is one of my absolute favorite, favorite essential oils as far as smelling it. I absolutely love the aroma of coriander. So cilantro or cilantro and coriander do not smell the same. So cilantro is from the leaves, coriander is from the seed, and it smells so amazing. Oh my gosh. It is, it is one of my favorite. It is absolutely deliciously amazing, and they are not the same at all, Amanda. Not the same at all. So no, please, 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 please do not avoid coriander essential oil. Um, Brooke asks, what are some essential oils to help with headaches? I didn't catch the oils you mentioned. Peppermint can be useful for headaches. Spearmint also, um, peppermint more so. Um, frankincense, some people find is great for headaches. Lavender is another one that could be useful for headaches. I do have a couple of recipes in my EO Recipes Club too um, that can be useful for headaches and you wanna definitely inhale. Inhaling those will help with headaches um, more effectively than topical use, but there are situations where topical use could be useful too. So if you go and access even the free level of the EO Recipes Club, I do have some information for you about headaches that is free. Um, I, I give you a few tips of things to look for, some simple fixes that aren't essential oils, and then I give you um, dilution amounts as well if you do have to apply topically. So go ahead, if you aren't already a member of the EO Recipes Club, go ahead and enroll at the free level and take a peek at the introduction to topics because you will learn some information in there as well. Um, anything for food poisoning, stomach upset? Yes, in the EO Recipes Club. I drink my teas. Yes, so that's what I was going to recommend. Those are actually what I recommend that's in the free level available at the free level in the intro section. But thinking of something to inhale or rub on stomach to be able to make it to drink the tea. Yes, so I do have topical applications. If you click on stomach upset, I do have teas and different things mentioned in the introduction. And then I have a personal inhaler recipe, diffuser recipe, and then I have a massage blend and a roller bottle recipe as well for stomach upset. Kelly's saying, so on the personal inhaler subject, can you put essential oil droplets on disc inserts for these homemade masks that nurses are now wearing? You can, but um, you can also just put them directly on the mask. So you can just put a drop right inside. I've actually had several people ask this of me. You can add um, tea tree essential oil, lemon essential oil. I recommend adding just one or two drops max. Probably one drop is going to be enough because it's gonna be right there. It's going to be pretty intense and um, it's going to be effective as well. So I would recommend probably one, two max, depending on where on the mask that it is, but you can absolutely, absolutely do that. You are welcome, Rebecca. 
Thank you so much for your help. I've learned so much from you. I think I've just about saved enough for your books. Oh, that's so awesome, Rebecca. You are going to learn so much more. Amanda, I thought because it's not an allergy, it would be fine, but I was leery. Let me go back up. Um, yeah, it's not an allergy, so you should be fine. Yeah, and they they just do not have this, the same smell. And also, just because um, it tastes funny to you doesn't mean that the smell will be um, funny either. So, yeah, and they're definitely not the same essential oils. You are welcome, Brooke. Hey, Bella, thanks for watching. Thoughts on Ravensara. Okay, this is one I need to look up because every single time, um, okay, just give me one second. I'm actually gonna, I was gonna grab my book, but I'm actually gonna search for it in my safety files because, so there is a Ravensara bark. There is a Ravensara leaf and um, Ravensara bark is potentially it is anticoagulant and has some drug interactions um, but both of them are potentially carcinogenic so those are ones that i prefer to avoid and then there at there is ravint Syrah. so there's ravin or raven Syrah, the one that you typed then there is ravint Syrah, which is typically known as whole leaf and i always get these confused because they're like almost spelled the same and then one actually goes by something else and all of that um, and just to make things a little bit more confusing, there's the whole leaf that I mentioned, and then there's also a whole wood. So this is why you got to pay attention to botanical names. You got to pay attention to chemotypes. You got to pay attention to, um, even the amounts of constituents that are in the essential oils. There's a lot of things to look for. Um, and it can be super tricky. So my thoughts on using Ravensera are, I don't use it. Do not recommend it. Ravintsara also is for ages 10 plus. Um, so you have to be careful with children with that as well. So I just don't use either one. There are other essential oils that are going to be just as effective, if not more, for any situation that you would use those for. I know a lot of people like to use those for congestion or respiratory issues. Grab fur needle, grab. There's other things you can grab that are going to be a lot more effective and also much more safe. What about stomach bloating? There are some herbal teas that you can use for stomach bloating. They're probably going to be the same ones that I would recommend for stomach upset, like peppermint tea, ginger tea, candied ginger. Those are the ones that I would recommend. Um, possibly digestive enzymes may be needed, um, but the inhalation of essential oils can be helpful for that. But I would definitely give the teas a try first. So anything internally, especially digestive, you wanna try to see if food can help with that before essential oils. So whether it's herbal teas or other herbal remedies, those could be more effective um, than even the inhalation of essential oils. So essential oils, I love them, as you can imagine, but they are not my first go-to for everything. Hi, Bella. Hey, Amanda. You are welcome, Amanda. Ashley, any oil to decrease appetite for weight loss? Yes. So I do have some essential oils listed in the EO Recipes Club. They are not on the free level, but if you click on appetite, you can click on the introduction to appetite and I actually do have some information over there about this. And then I have two different personal inhaler recipes too. Um, Bella saying, I've been trying to find out if you've ever heard of Monk personal inhalers I have, would you consider them safe? No, I would not. If you go over to the learning center and click on inhaling, um, I believe I have talked about it. Yes, over there. So let me just give you the link to the learning center and then you click on inhaling and then five down, you'll see the personal inhaler slash aroma stick. So no, actually that's just talking about personal inhalers, right? Cause they're also known as, okay. I thought I had somewhere in here where I talk about one. It must be in the basics class, in the basics course. But basically I know I have actually, there is a link somewhere in this Facebook group where I did talk about this live. But the thing that I don't like about the Monk personal inhalers is the fact that they have, um, that they are oil based. And so inhaling those oils or even smoking those oils can actually cause what's called popcorn lung. So it's not as much the essential oils that are the problem in those vaping sticks. It's the, the base oil that they're using that you are burning and smoking and then inhaling that is going to be um, the biggest issue with those. I know there was a professional aromatherapist that used to back Monk 
Um, they used to quote him as saying, you know, these are safe. And all along I've been saying these are not safe. This is why I did my research and I've linked and I have certain um, information that I used um, with that to back that up. Since then, I don't know if this person has retracted their statement or or what particularly went on there, but that is no longer something that is recommended by some other professional. Um, so I do not consider them safe. I've never considered them safe. Um, it is partially to do with the essential oils. Some of the essential oils that they were using in their blends were not safe for use, such as some of the essential oils that we've talked about tonight that may be potentially carcinogenic or whatnot. But it's mostly the oil base. It's like 80% vegetable oil or oil based. And you can look, I mean, I did my research and you can find information showing the damage that people are doing to their bodies. And I know now with like the e-cigs and all of that that are even more popular now than it was five to six to seven years ago when I did the Monk um, reviews, it's, it's being shown to be not safe too. So yeah, I would not recommend that. You can just use a personal inhaler. There's no lighting, smoking, any of that involved. You are breathing in 100% essential oil versus you know, 80% vegetable oil that's being um, burned and inhaled. So yeah, I do not recommend that. Do not recommend that at all. Hey, Linda from Australia. Thanks so much for joining. So I've been live for almost an hour already. That's crazy. This has gone so fast. If you have any more questions, throw them in because my voice is not going to hold up for too much longer. Um, I, my kids and I actually, we all, my husband as well, we all watch the 47 meters down uncaged. <laughs> we were waiting for the jump scare, right? Like we were waiting. It's a shark movie. So we, we were waiting and still, still we're all like screaming. <laughs> so this morning my voice is a little bit, I'm like, why is my throat sore? <laughs> just a teeny tiniest bit and it's from screaming. <laughs> you aren't supposed to inhale, but I can see someone not knowing getting hurt. Well, see, that's the thing is people are using them and inhaling. That is the thing. And yeah, people are not using them correctly. And even the way that they are, um, let me see, let me go back to their website. It's been a few years. Even the way that they are portraying them to be used actually is breathing them in. Um, they are suggesting that you should inhale them at least last I, last I saw um breathing them or even through the mouth so let me actually just read this or watch this video really quickly so you pop it hang on give me one second actually i'm gonna yeah so she's putting it in her mouth and she is yeah she breathed it in and she blew smoke out her nose so it is um it is breathing it in it definitely is inhaling so i do not recommend it at all um you are welcome bella you know, they might be safer than vaping, but yeah, they're not, I do not recommend them at all. <sighs> okay. Are there any more, um, essential oil questions that I can answer for you guys? If you have any more, if you are typing them in, I'm going to give you just a few moments because I know that Facebook has a little bit of delay between when I talk and when you guys hear. And I want to make sure that I don't miss any of your questions. So I'm going to let this go for just another moment. And if you ever have a question, all you have to do is post in our group. So just scroll up to our group where it says, write something, type your question in. It will be pending um, overnight because, you know, everybody, we're not, we, Roxanne and I are not on 24 seven and Roxanne actually answers your questions and tags them in the appropriate place um, so that you can get an answer. And almost everything is going to be tagged in our learning center or our EO recipes club. I know I'm still moving information from our using essential oil safely website over to the learning center. So I appreciate your patience as I'm doing that. Um, what is the attribute making an oil suitable to decrease appetite? Aperitive would increase. Yes, but it has the key is metabolism though. So if you read the free information over, let me do that. Um, the same essential oils can suppress that can also encourage. And the key is metabolism. Some people have a fast metabolism. I'm just going to read this. This is due to some people having a fast metabolism and others having a slow metabolism. Those with a fast metabolism may find the essential oils to encourage an appetite rather than suppress it. So sometimes essential oils are dual purpose and that can be actually a good thing. What essential oils are good for eczema? Um, so there are, I do have some in our EO recipes club. They are not available at the free level, but you want to look 
for what is the therapeutic property that I'm using here? I believe it's anti-inflammatory. You want to look for calming and anti-inflammatory um, essential oils. But go ahead and enroll in the free level of the EO Recipes Club because I do have some free information, even though it's not the recipes, I do have some free information available for you that you can find about eczema that still may help you, even if it's not an exact recipe, um, unless you are a member or a VIP member. You are welcome, Ashley. Um, Valerie, what do you recommend for toothache for adults? So many say clove oil, but I worry about consuming. Okay, so if, okay, let me just show you. I'm gonna show you in this book because it's the one on top. Both, both of these books um, that I've been showing you have the safety information for clove. So here's the safety information for clove. So if you are not on aspirin or blood thinners, if you do not have any bleeding disorders, if you are not about to have surgery, if you didn't just have surgery, um, if you do not use on damaged or broken skin, if you are um, not using pethidine, MAOIs, or SSRIs, then, and if you are, um, no, that's not true. If you are not a dog, <laughs> then you can use this topically on your tooth. So how I recommend this is adding a drop or two to a cotton swab of the clove essential oil and then rubbing on your tooth. Try to avoid getting on your gums because it can be irritating. It needs technically a 0.5% dilution when used on the skin. Um, it can be irritating. Keep that in mind. Um, and you can swab that directly on your tooth and that can help for toothaches. Please also see a dentist. But meantime, you can use clove essential oil um, in that way. And that can be safe. You are welcome, Heather. You are very welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna get off. If you have any more questions, throw them in. If I see them later, I will answer them. Um, I think I'm gonna go play Friendsopoly with my children right now. So um, after I add a few more blends, or maybe I'll do that first and do that after. Hmm, a couple of things I have to do tonight. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and throw them in. And as I see them, I will answer them. But I hope you all learned something. I hope you have a great night and I will talk to you later. See ya.